Fergie, tell, tell us a little bit about the book to start. Well, the book is about grassroots of baseball across 66, across the United States. All right, so what does it have to do with, with you? Tell them your connection to the story. Well, I played ball in Chicago. I hate well, there you go. And, <laughs> and where does Route 66 go? Right off the older drive. <laughs> Did you drive on Route 66 a yes, lot? Yes, I have a lot. You I, have. I lived in the south side of Chicago my first eight years with the Cubs. Okay. And I was on uh, that route a lot, outer drive. So I know there's pictures, which we'll get to, but share with us some of your experiences on Route 66. Well... I used to always go with either Ernie Banks or Billy Williams. Well, there you go. That, and, that's uh, a great story. Hall of Famers. And uh, the nice thing about it, we played all day games. So I was on that, that Route 66 probably 8.30, 9 o'clock every morning. You had to be dressing on the field at 9.15. That's so good. So Ernie Banks, you and Billy Williams, please share some of the stories you guys told in the car on Route 66. <laughs> well, pitching against Don Drysdale at home, Ernie used to always say, I'm getting two today. And Billy would say, well, if you're getting two, I'm going to try to get three. Oh, is that right? But, uh, you know, Drysdale was tough on our ball club. You know, there were a lot of times I went out there and, and had to scuffle to, to get two or three runs for right. him. But, uh, you know, I, I tell the story all the time. When Drysdale had that 53 or 54 inning stretch, he got me twice. Once in L.A., one to nothing, and then in Chicago, two to nothing. And uh, believe me, guys... That year, I got shut out five times, one to nothing. I set a national and you, record. And I'm sure every one of your games was a complete game. Uh, try to be, yes. Yeah, <laughs> Realize that Fergie Jenkinson, 71, and you guys know this, started 39 games. 30 of them were complete games. That's unbelievable. All right, Jeannie, tell us about your experience with the book. Well, Grassroots Baseball, Route 66, as you know, it starts in Chicago, ends in Santa Monica, and it's the stories of baseball intertwined with the Americana all along the route. Well, and as you know, baseball, though it's played the same all around the world, it looks different in different places. And that's what I'm interested in, telling the stories and showing the culture of baseball all along Route 66. And each chapter opens with a legend that talks about what it was like growing up playing baseball along Route 66 in his early days. I've seen you for a long time. You and I were in Cuba together. The idea that you were laying out when the pitch comes in, this is a veteran baseball <laughs> photographer, announcer, knows the whole thing. Share with me some of the experiences. Like, what are the significant kind of differences as you drive down Route 66? How does the baseball change, evolve? What do you notice? Well, you know, it's, it's urban cities like Chicago, small towns like Baxter Springs, Kansas, and old guys playing vintage baseball uh, in Missouri and uh, guys playing baseball on a Pueblo in New Mexico, and it's just all these different, you know, levels of the game. Everything from T-ball and all the minor league ballparks that right. are along Route 66 that are fabulous to document. You, Jeff, know as much about baseball and its history. So how does a book like this tie to a fan who wants to know more about the sport, not necessarily the personalities, but the game? Well, the great thing, Carl, is that Gene's uh, pictures tell the stories of baseball on Route 66, and then you have these incredible legends who really lend a voice. So you have George Brett talking about what it was like playing in the shadows of the Rose Bowl to Alex Bregman, a current day player, growing up on Albuquerque and, and uh, trailing around with uh, Ray Birmingham at the University of New Mexico, Jim Tomey, baseball on, on uh, uh, baseball in Texas, baseball on a Native American res reservation, uh, in Santa Fe, Oklahoma, where Johnny Bench is from, he's in this book. Jim Tomey wrote a great, great chapter about Illinois. Talks about what it was like bus travel growing, uh, going, on, going around in the minors. Those were great pictures. Thank you. They are so warm. I mean, uh, when I looked at some of those pictures, you're like, you can feel the warmth in the picture. Riding in the back of that, uh, you know, that pickup truck. What a great shot. 1968. That's a 68 pickup truck, and it's from Binger, Oklahoma, where Johnny Bench is from, and that was the year he won Rookie of the Year, and those kids went to his high school. Doesn't get any better. Fergie grew up in Oklahoma. Fergie lived in Oklahoma for a long time, yeah. traveled Route 66. We're going to take a quick timeout. You guys stay here. We'll have much more. Fergie, you were a Globetrotter, right? Did you play on the Globetrotters? For three you, seasons. Three seasons. We have to talk about that when we come back.
the Route 66 picture book. Now, how much does that thing weigh, by the way? I mean, this is a big book. This is a big, beautiful book. But eight pounds. Is it eight pounds? But eight pounds. Five pounds, five ounces. <laughs> I know it's got 250 photos in it. It's beautiful. <laughs> Hi, Fergie. So we went to break talking about you and your basketball experience. Harlem Globetrotters, I don't know that a lot of people know that. What was that experience? Well, I joined the team in 1966 uh, <laughs> briefly, and then I basically played with them in 67. Joe Zavino was the uh, marketing individual with the Globetrotters. They had a head office on Michigan Avenue. Okay. And uh, Joe wanted to know if you're going to go back to Canada, would you like to tour about 20 games with the team? Okay. As a promotion. And I was going to be the pitcher giving up each night the home run to Middle Arc Lemon. So it went so successful in the first 20 games, they stretched it to about 30 35. This one is down the line. Hang on a second, Ferg. You may have a little action. Rounding is Luke Vincent, who will be held in third on a good double by Owen Everhart. All right, sorry for that. Go ahead. Well, Joe Antonino said it's going so well, we'll extend it through uh, through January. And I said, well, you're not going to go to spring training in February. <laughs> so three months is like enough. So they extended to 68 and 69. I played with Menel Arc, Curly, Jackie Jackson, Showboat Hall, Gee Sosby, all the guys. What a great A lot, a lot of fun. Uh, how do people get the book? Grassrootsbaseball.org. Grassroots Baseball, if you're here at Williamsport, of course, uh, you can get a team store, 100% of the proceeds going back to Little League today, or grassrootsbaseball.org, you can get them right from our website. All right, so with two outs, we'll keep our eye on what's going on in the field. H how hard or easy was it to get some of these players to contribute to the book? It was really easy because Figured everybody that. loves it. I mean, they love Gene's photography, they love carrying the words with it, and Billy Hatcher, Ryan Howard, Adam LaRoche, Jim Tomey, Johnny Bench, Adam Bregman, Alex Bregman, rather, George Brett, all contributing incredible essays about what it was like growing up along the Mother Road. Of course, Johnny oh. Bench sharing a great story about watching the game of the week on TV with his dad. And Mouncher says, now batting the next great switch hitter for the New York Yankees from Oklahoma, oh. Mickey Mantle. And uh, Johnny turns to his dad and says, oh, you can be from Oklahoma and play in the majors? <laughs> well, the broadcaster was right about that, though. Mickey Mantle is that. Jenny, you've experienced, you've been here at the Little League World Series for a while and the Little League Classic. What's it like to take pictures here in Williamsport? It's fabulous to take pictures here. It's the amateur game at its right. highest level for Little League. And it makes a lot of great pictures. And then look at the atmosphere. Talk about culture and sense of place. It doesn't get any better than the Little League World Series. And I just love it here. When I was here in 2017 shooting, I was in Japan before that, and I shot the opening day of Little League in Tokyo, and I arrived here, and it ends up that that team that I photographed for oh, opening day okay. made it to the Little League World Series, Is and they right? won the whole thing. Yeah, it was fantastic. So I shot their first day and their very last day of Little League that year. Ferg, you grew up in Canada, so what was your little, what was your youthful baseball experiences like? Hold on, we don't hear Ferg. Do you guys have his microphone up? Oh, yeah. There we go. I, I was nine years old. Nine but, years old. Yeah, but I didn't start to pitch until I was 16. I was a first baseman. But the nice thing about it is the, the competitive part of having fun. And that's what my dad wanted me to experience growing up. Was it easy for a competitive guy like you just to have fun? <laughs> well, I wanted to win like everybody that else. That is fun, right? For you, sure. winning was fun. Winning, winning, winning was a lot of fun. And I played on a couple of OBA championships uh, in the Bantam age of... 14, 15, and then senior ball, uh, or intermediate ball, that was uh, 1920. And what was nice is you win a OBA championship, they give you a jacket right. and a crest that, that tells you you're the champion. You got any advice for Parker Workman? He's got two strikes, the bases are loaded. What's the pitcher going to do here? Uh, he's got to try to get a strikeout. Oh. Or not a pass ball, that's for sure. Your left handed catcher helped him out greatly right there, didn't he? Yeah. You know, what's nice is as the hitter up, you can't afford to panic. Make sure you can put the ball in play. But uh, the pitcher is trying to get you out. That's for sure. He's got a one ball, two strike count. Team's already up, three zip. Oh. What do you make of the state of baseball and pitching now? I told you you had the 30 complete games, 39 starts. You have more complete games than Adam Wainwright had in his career. In that one year, he's got 28, and he's a guy that likes to stay in. Well, you know, the, the game to me... Uh, has, has changed a lot because four or five years ago, 100 pitches you could stay in the game, right. not 65 to 80. And, and it's tough to win ball games if you don't, you don't 
you know, pitching the, the fifth inning. Keep them pitching. Hey, thanks, guys, very much. Pleasure. Grassroots Baseball, Route 66, Ferguson Jenkins, G.D. Fruth, and, of course, Jeff Idelson. So much fun. Thank you. I'm Nicole. grateful. Thank you very much. We'll take a time out. More pictures like that in the book, grassrootsbaseball.org. And we'll continue. Three zip coming up, bottom three.